Cardinals offseason mailbag, addressing the payroll, starting the pitch, and much more come to know more about this news, and firsthand just came out more so you never miss any news like this. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for you to always be notified of channel news. Let's start the video. January is often a peculiar month in the land of baseball. There are few in-person events, news days are often slow, and even though the weather is approaching spring, the season still feels so far away. But whether you're looking forward to glove snaps and the good old-fashioned snap of the bat, or are feeling nostalgic for a summer night in the backyard, or still can't help but feel despondent that we're still more than a month away from pitchers and catcher reports, I'm here to tell you not to worry. Baseball will be back before we know it. And when that happens, he'll hit the ground running. Cardinals pitchers and catchers are scheduled to report to Roger Dean Stadium and the team's spring compound in Jupiter, Florida, on February 12th, which, yes, is Super Bowl Sunday, but I know we don't talk about the NFL in St. Louis. The date is earlier than usual, but this is to allow players participating in the World Baseball Classic to practice with their MLB club before heading out to the tournament. The Cardinals have plenty of players cleared to play in the WBC, including Adam Wainwright, Miles McCullough, Nolan Arenado, and Paul Goldschmidt, Team USA, Tommy Edmond, Team Korea, and Lars Nootbaar, Team Japan. Other players who could participate are Tyler O'Neill, Team Canada, Giovanni Gallegos, Team Mexico, and Wilson Contreras, Team Venezuela. However, as Contreras is new to the organization, it seems unlikely that the Cardinals will grant him the opportunity to play. However, the offseason is still a bit short and many questions remain about what the Cardinals roster will look like. The one big move that St. Louis did was sign Contreras to a five-year contract during the winter meetings. Otherwise, President of Baseball Operations John Moziliak has held his ground during baseball's free agency frenzy, although the Cardinals have plenty of depth to trade. Leave your like if you are enjoying this video. Let's continue with the video. The front office isn't as cheap as fans claim, but there's a clear divide between its spending and that of the National League's other big contenders. Do you think the division's relative weakness is the reason the front office resists big spending? Or do you think they take the fan base's extreme loyalty for granted, knowing the playoff run will draw crowds and sell merchandise, etc.? Cole K. Is there any explanation for front office offseason tendencies to make one big acquisition, for example Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, and most recently Contreras, and then do virtually nothing else to significantly improve the roster? Is it a matter of overvaluing the talent in the current 40-man roster, or simply a reflection of a goal of building a team good enough to win the division, while hoping for the best in the random nature of the postseason series results? Eric H. We'll start by taking a look at the Cardinals' projected payroll for 2023. According to Fangraphs, the Cardinals' projected payroll for 2023 is currently $164 million. The team finished the 2022 season with an estimated payroll of $163 million. So yes, as Moziliak announced during his end-of-season press conference last October, the team's payroll has technically increased. However, it obviously hasn't been increased in the way most fans have been led to believe, and the organization obviously hasn't increased its free agent spending to match other National League rollers like the Mets, Phillies, Braves, or Padres. We finished the video here. I hope you all enjoyed this video, right? 